In today's video, I'm going to be playing Minecraft on my hacking tosh. Wait, hang on a minute. That's one of those really old cheese grater Mac Pros. Aren't those like 10 years old? Well, yeah, they are. But this one has a bit of a secret to it. If we take off the side panel here, as you can see, I've built a PC inside this Mac Pro case. All right, well, that's cool and all, but it's not going to run Mac OS, is it? It's a PC. Well, it does. I've hackintoshed it. Took me ages to work out, but it runs absolutely flawlessly, just like a real Mac. So in today's video, we're going to be seeing how Minecraft runs on it. I'm going to be going through the story behind it, why I decided to do it. And yeah, if you're new around here, make sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so here we are on the hackintosh. So this is my main desktop. This is what I use. So if we go ahead and go to about this Mac here, here are the specs of my Hackintosh. So I've got a 3.6 gigahertz Intel Core i7 9700K. I've got a gigabyte Z390M gaming motherboard, 16 gigabytes of Corsair 3200 megahertz DDR4 RAM. I've got a one terabyte NVMe SSD, which is like my main boot drive. And the graphics card is a Radeon RX 560 4GB. So I think in the Minecraft test, the graphics card might let us down here. Because it is a piddly little thing. And the only reason I use it is because Mac doesn't work well with NVIDIA graphics cards. Anything newer than High Sierra, the NVIDIA graphics cards just won't work. I believe some do. But yeah, no, I just went on the safe side and got an AMD card. Cheapest one I could find does the job. Good thing about the Hackintosh is you can add your own storage. So this is not like the M1 where the SSD is soldered onto the boards. I can add as many hard drives as I want in this computer. So I've got my SSD, I've got a backup drive, four terabytes, time machine backup. I've got an SSD with macOS Catalina on it. I've got a downloads drive. I've got another Monterey drive, which I might wipe and make a Windows drive. And then I've just got a one terabyte storage drive as you do. And yeah, I can also upgrade my memory as well, my RAM, unlike in an M1 Mac. So yeah, I can use my two other slots. Could probably get 32 or 64 gigabytes of RAM in this computer if I really wanted to. But I've just got 16, does the job for me. And yeah, this is like my computer really. This is what I use. As you guys saw in the intro, it's a really cool build with a PC inside a Mac Pro case. But the question today is, will it run Minecraft? And how well will it run Minecraft? That is the question that we're going to be answering today. So yeah, let's go ahead and install it. I've never done any gaming on this system before, but yeah, I've got all my software and all the stuff on here, and that takes up quite a lot of storage, which is why a Hackintosh is the best bet for me. So we don't need to worry about Rosetta or anything like that, because this is an Intel Mac. So everything should just run natively, which is always good. As always, I've got my temperature monitor up here. And this will just show you the overall temperature of my CPU. I've seen this get pretty hot before. I was doing some something on Logic the other day. And this got up to about 80 degrees. So it'll be interesting to see what it goes up to when I'm gaming. So like always, we're going to go with a vanilla 1.8.9 installation. You guys know the drill by now. I've done this video so many times. I guess we'll just have to play big windowed mode for now. But yeah, let's go ahead and create a single player creative world. Ah uh, yeah, let's see how much FPS we get. Now, I want to do a new thing. Put in the comment section right now what FPS you think I'm going to get. Pause the video and put your prediction in the comment section down below. Okay, and now let's have a look. Here we go. We've got 60 FPS. Solid 60 FPS. 120. Okay. I think we've got V-Sync on or something. Let me just... Uh... Ah, V-Sync. I thought it was, it was there. I'm dumb. Hey, look at how much FPS we're getting with this Hackintosh. 400 FPS. Had, we don't even have Optifine yet. Vanilla 1.8.9 installation. 400 FPS. That's actually really good. I thought I was going to get a lot less than this thanks to my RX 560. But it's actually not too bad at all, really. Now, the world we've spawned in is an island in the middle of nowhere. So let's go and fly over somewhere a little bit more demanding. Yeah, no, this is... Really good. 400 FPS without any Optifine. I hate to say it, but I think this might actually be better than my main computer. My main computer isn't actually the best, really. I only really use my computer for uh, doing YouTube and stuff on. 
Might be doing upgrades soon. Let me know if you want to see a video of me upgrading my main computer in the comments. But yeah, no, this is perfectly playable. 400 FPS, more than enough. If we go and have a look at our CPU temperature here, we're on about 53 degrees, which is pretty good. It normally is idle about 30, I believe. Highest, like I said, I've seen it get to about 80. So it's doing pretty good here on uh, the old Minecraft. Let's go ahead and do a Hypixel lobby test just because I want to kind of push it here. That single player world was a complete breeze for this Hackintosh. Let's go on Hypixel here, go on the lobby. Let's turn on the players, make it as difficult as possible for our PEF3. And we've dropped about 150 FPS, which is still perfect. Like we're not getting 30 or anything. We're not getting like five like we would on my low end laptop. Yeah, it's perfect. If we go in and uh, run up here with all the big kind of blocks and structures that we need to load in. Yeah, we're getting still about 250. This is really, really impressive. If we can get Lunar Client on here, I don't know, 1000 FPS maybe? We'll have to see. All right, so since the Hackintosh completely flew through 1.8.9, let's try the latest 1.18 version of Minecraft. Let's create a creative world here. For some reason, when I load up the latest version of Minecraft on this computer, the fans go absolutely ballistic. Now, what FPS do you think we're going to do? Once again, write in the comments what you think, and let's reveal them. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that is still really good for 1.18. Okay, we're taking a little bit of a hit now that we're flying around. We've got some uh, big hills and stuff over here. About 150, which is still <laughs> definitely playable. I'm not complaining about 150 FPS. About 200 now that we're up on the hill. But yeah, like we're taking a little bit of a hit by being on the latest version over 1.8.9. But it's not a massive difference. I'd say this is pretty good. It's pretty impressive for the latest version of 1.18. Let's try and go on the Hypixel lobby with 1.18. See if that makes a difference. We're just under 100, about 90 FPS, 98. Oh, this guy's glowing. Whoa. That's so cool. I want to get that. If we go over here to this area, which is normally the most demanding part of the Hypixel lobby, it's actually where we get the most FPS, which is quite surprising. We've got all these like big buildings and structures and stuff. But yeah, no, I'm not complaining. 1.18, still perfectly playable. But it dropped about 45 there, which is a little bit choppy. But I'm sure if you limited your FPS or put V-Sync on or whatever. These are our video settings, by the way. So now we're going to try Lunar Client. See how much FPS we get with Lunar Client. Hopefully, we might be able to get 1,000 FPS. We'll have to see. We're going to try 1.8.9 Lunar Client and see how we get on with that. We've obviously got Optifine as well, which comes with Lunar Client. So we should be able to get some good FPS if we use the right settings. So once again, let's go into our single player world here. See how much FPS we get now using Lunar. Okay, I just joined my 1.18 world in 1.8. But look at our FPS. 500 FPS. That is insane. We've got the FPS mod on here. I haven't messed around with any of these settings or anything. All pretty standard, really. I've literally just thrown the FPS HUD on. If we go into our video settings here, we're basically playing on the settings that I'd normally play on on my regular gaming PC. Right, so let's go do some Hypixel duels. Now, just a word of warning, I'm using an Apple keyboard here, which is not the best for uh, playing Minecraft on by any means. But I am using a regular mouse because the Apple mouse is literally like a bar of soap. It's so slippery and not good. Would not recommend doing Minecraft PvP with it. So a little bit of a backstory about why I decided to do a Hackintosh in the first place. And it all stemmed from Apple just not having what I wanted. I wanted a powerful computer, a desktop computer that I could supply my own keyboard and mouse with. The Mac Mini at the time was just not going to cut it. The Mac Pro was not even out yet, the new Mac Pro that was not out at the time. The iMacs as well, they weren't really the best no upgradability or anything with them and there was also the macbooks which at the time were notorious for overheating had really rubbish butterfly keyboard switches and were just not what i wanted really i wanted an upgradable machine so the only way to do it really was a hackintosh now i did actually used to have a mac pro a 2009 mac pro which i used for i think about a year before i decided to go the hackintosh route and that's why I did it in the Mac Pro case, just to kind of match my setup. 
I make it kind of like a sleeper PC because from the outside, it looks like an old Mac Pro. But on the inside, it's a really good computer and capable of running Minecraft really well as we're seeing in this video. So the only choice if I wanted an upgradable desktop was the old Mac Pro. So I got the old Mac Pro, like I said, run it for about a year, but it just wasn't quick enough for my needs, really. It's got really old Intel Xeon CPUs and I think only DDR2, I thought DDR3, I think. So yeah, it was starting to get on a bit. I mean, it didn't even have USB 3.0 on it. So it was starting to show its age quite a lot. And I really did like the design of the tower. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and build this Hackintosh, which you see before you at the start of the video. So before you start commenting, I didn't actually gut my original Mac Pro to build this computer. I actually sold my Mac Pro on eBay to a guy that I believe made a server out of it. So I was glad to see that go to a good home. And in the meantime, I got myself a broken 2006 Mac Pro with a pretty good case, out casing. It wasn't too scratched up or anything. And that's what I gutted and made this Hackintosh with. The actual Hackintosh itself, the actual build was quite difficult. The case needed a lot of drilling and dremeling in order to convert it to micro ATX because as standard, Apple have got like this weird motherboard that goes in there. So you can't just put any old PC parts in there. You have to modify it. So I'll throw some pictures on screen right now of how I did it, the whole kind of process behind it. Anyway, after that, it was a simple PC build, really. I just got a motherboard CPU. It was just a regular PC build, which I'm sure you guys have seen millions of times before. It's just interesting because it was in a Mac Pro case or X Mac Pro case, should I say. So once it was built, the second biggest challenge was actually Hackintoshing the thing. I was gonna try and be lazy about the Hackintosh and just type in my specs on GitHub somewhere and hope someone had made a pre-made configuration file that I could just use for my Hackintosh. But I decided to go all in, you know, it's much better to learn these things than just use someone else's hard work. And then if something goes wrong, you've no idea what's happened. So it's better to have an understanding of these things. And yeah, like I said, you need a lot of time on your hands to work out how to do it. So yeah, I went with open core, took me a while to work out lots of troubleshooting, lots of posts on various forums and discord servers. But eventually I remember at about 1.30 in the morning, I finally got it to boot. And yeah, I literally just wanted to scream and wake everyone up. I was so happy it was finally working. And yeah, it's been working ever since really. The only kind of times that it's a bit annoying is when there's a new macOS update out. For example, I've only recently just updated to macOS Monterey. And shout out to one of my subscribers called Pixel Squared, who's actually been helping me the past week or so sort out my Hackintosh. I've also gone ahead and got myself a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card, which is similar to what actual Apple Macs use. And that allows me to basically have AirDrop and stuff like that. So this basically runs just like a real Mac. I'm probably not going to do a Hackintosh tutorial on this channel. It'll probably be about an hour long, really boring, lots of hard work. It's far easier probably just to search on YouTube and find a Hackintosh tutorial from someone who actually knows what they're doing. I have a basic understanding of it, but I'm not like a genius at it. I can't troubleshoot every single problem that could possibly come up. So yeah, I'd recommend if you are going to do this, definitely do your research, watch a lot of tutorials, have a basic understanding and you should be okay. But yeah, that's basically going to be the video, guys. I hope you guys all enjoyed this. I'm going to be doing some more videos on my M1 MacBook Air very soon. I just need to get the capture card and everything sorted for that. This guy's just calling out my uh, disguise name. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you guys all for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace.